Hey guys, gonna do some rapid chess today. So the past semester I've mainly been playing these 3 plus 2 and also the bullet tournaments. So today we're going back to rapid chess, a little bit more serious, um, something I'm generally a little bit better at. So we'll see if we get a challenge here. Usually they say that as you play longer chess, it's actually how you improve because you have more time to think about what's going on. But seeing as my speed was so bad, I think that in the bullet and the fast blitz, you are able to see the tactics right on the board a lot quicker and their opponent's obvious threats really quickly and I think that can also help in longer time controls. Um, it helps you figure out what lines to calculate deeper so we'll see if that ends up being true or not. If we can get a game. I don't have any restrictions on the ratings of the people who I hope to play. Let's go ahead and look in the lobby and see if there's anything Not really. Eleven plus eight with the sixteen thirty. We'll wait for a little bit and see what happens. So this time I've got my second monitor up here in front of, as you can see where I'm looking now. So, not going to have the same problem as before with my head sort of floating below the screen. Yeah, maybe we'll go ahead and challenge one of these other guys. Something 180 80, that's a real game. Yeah, let's do this 8 plus 15. Why not? It's not as long as I'd want. It's kind of a weird amount of time. I've never played before, but let's see what happens. We're getting a king's pawn. I'm going to practice the French again. This is something new for me. And that is a move I haven't seen. I'm just going to play the normal move. If he takes on Passat, then I would get to develop with my bishop, but he doesn't. So we're back into the standard advanced variation. I need to learn how to do the arrows. Okay, just right click and drag. I go with this queen b6 variation, basically going in for this d4 square as early as possible. Still playing it pretty fast. I'm forgetting it's classical, so I've got time to consider my moves. But normally the plan is to go knight to b6, which that doesn't really stop. I wonder what's the point of that move. Probably going in for this square as soon as possible. Uh, this one, b5. So I can play it slow and but it's also going in for a4, which would double attack and force my queen away. So maybe a better move is 
bishop c8 to d7. That controls both of these squares nicely. I don't really see a downside. Any other plans? That really just makes the most sense to me. What if I then want to go c6? Can he? He can't really pin me. Don't see any downsides. Probably shouldn't spend that long in the opening in an 8 minute game. 15 minutes probably fine. So what will they try to do now? Probably try to find a square for the light squared bishop. Or just keep protecting this piece. But now, wonder about h6. Because then I can at least get this bishop. If I can get my knight to the square. He's attacking c5 twice, so I have to be careful about that. h6, bishop takes h6, pawn takes h6, I get the open g file, which is supposed to be good for me. I'm going to try it out, it looks fun. So, white remains flexible on which side they want to castle. We'll see if they choose to develop the queen or the light squared bishop first. Probably the light squared bishop. I wonder where they'll put it though. Maybe one downfall of this is that they haven't yet developed the light squared bishop. So, light squared bishop to. Um, what is this? D. I don't know what that's about. I don't think I should think too long, though. Because I still get to execute my plan, and they have no clear threats that I can tell with that move. So the question is. How now to protect the pawn? I'm pretty sure I can end up winning this. Oh, is their idea? I don't know what their idea is. This looks fine. Because maybe Okay, it's just to do a bunch of exchanges. Now, this e5 pawn is weak. The knight is attacked. I can easily play... Yeah, I was wondering about that move. But that actually just hangs the knight, doesn't it? Let's see, I've got plenty of time. Check. Queen blocks, I take the queen, I'm up a piece, I retreat the knight with e7. Knight blocks, I can still retreat the knight. No real threats, and I pushed the pieces back. All checks out to me. Is there any weird sacrifice going on here? Well, it's a check, so it's he's got to move. She... Yeah, 
Yeah, I want to keep pieces on the board. Makes sense. Yet my queen cannot really be blocked from this square. So seeing as I'm up a piece, there's the queen can't even move yet because it's tied to the rook. So there's some development problems. Probably castles next. So knight e2, e7, castles. Maybe, maybe taking and making my pawn structure messed up isn't so good for them. Maybe I should just play a6, and then if they castle I get in bishop b5, and then the light squared bishop's gone. Because if I move back, we castle, it's possible that the queen comes in and we've got an attack on my king's side, and I don't want that. So, yeah, let's do this. And if they do take, there's no dark squared bishops on the board, so I can, yeah, this is the plan. I think it's a nice way to simplify matters for me. Yeah. Sort of get rid of any attacking chances. Yeah, but that drops the rook, doesn't it? I mean, my queen looks kind of trapped, but I don't think it's actually trapped. And it's... I can always go to a2. I'm going to do it. I mean, even if my queen... Even if I take the knight, if I take my queen, I'm still up material. So this looks winning. Yeah, I see what they're doing. But this e-pawn is hanging. And then I take it, I protect this. The knight's protecting it. There's really no threats. <clears throat> now they're playing fast and hoping to win on time somehow, I believe. Yep, just giving up. I probably could have played queen to d4. Forced to trade of some sort, or at least the queen to retreat. Looks good, so let's go ahead and not analyze this. I hope that it's still, yeah, actually, this worked reasonably well. So we'll go through once without the engine. Then we'll add the engine, even though it was really just a game of blunders by the opponent. So, this move order seems not right. I mean, it's just a transposition, but does it give them any other options? Take seems bad on this seems like a good place the dark squared bishop maybe play can continue I'm not sure if I want to 
I can always Fianchetto the light squared bishop. Yeah, that's how you do it. How do you get rid of the arrows, though? <laughs> that's one way. But I can also develop my king's side quickly and castle quickly. I wonder. I can also play just bishop d7. Or I can hold off on that. Because white's got this annoying check. Anyways, that's not what happened. It clearly looks fine. Let's just add the computer. Yeah, they say no real advantage. Just develop normally. So we get back into the standard exchange. I think that's an early night. Maybe not. These are all standard. I like my play so far. This, I'm not so sure about. Here I felt like this would be good. So if I try to go here and gang up on this pawn, this seems bad. It's a weird pawn structure. There's an advanced pawn here. We'll check it after the game. How would white continue though? Castles? I don't have to worry about this. Probably just this, but nothing's really falling anywhere. So, not sure that was a great move though. So what did they do? I don't know what this does at all anyways. It's a waste of a move. It unprotects the knight, which I ended up taking. So I get my knight in where I want it. I get these exchanges, and right away, they notice what I was saying before, but it's too late. So here, this is interesting. The other option I was thinking was this. And then I was saying castles castles, and then some, oop, that's not what I meant, and then some move, queen, here let's say, I mean, there's no harm in playing g3 here, or is there? Coming in here. I don't know. I'm not good at attacking, so I don't know what white would play. I still get this chance. Is there a. But then the knight can slowly make its way. Yeah. That's kind of scary. All the time, though, this pawn is unprotected. I guess I didn't realize that, so... <clears throat> if they do this variation, well, I could just take this pawn. And then maybe even... Go here. <clears throat> it doesn't seem like... The best way to go, because they still get this move, but is this really so bad? Hold on a sec. 
Yeah, no, this is winning material for me. So that's totally fine. So where do they go to try to continue the attack? The queen only has this square. And now I get this. And the queen is trapped. No, the queen's got this entire dark square aisle to go to. But it, I, I'm not worried about this. This is not that scary. So it's all good. But still, to avoid all that, this basically prevents castling, which is really annoying for white. Because white's really constrained here, actually. They can't move the queen. The queen goes anywhere. Take the rook. Wow, check out these arrows. I can move them. They can. So this is what they should have done, in my opinion. And now, castles to free up the queen. castles and I'm just up a piece so it's all fair it's all either way it's good but obviously that's completely winning so yeah let's turn on the engine you can't see it but I'm doing a computer analysis See if I missed anything. Whoop. Yeah, I'm going to have to change the setup so you can see the evaluation better. But it looks like I made one mistake, zero inaccuracies, and zero blunders. And they made one inaccuracy, two mistakes, and two blunders. My average senti pawn loss was 20, theirs was 83. So, actually, a really clean game for me. Whoa, changing the board and everything. So let's see what my mistake was and where their mistakes were. All looks good so far. They, the computer says this moves fine. Inaccuracy, best move was queen d2. What does the computer say about this move? Ah. That move could be bet by this move. And then I'm getting the knight in here anyway. That's good to remember, actually. Uh, I should remember that for this, for the French. That, so this is one thing I'm doing. When I see something that's interesting to me, I need to, so, Going over a tactic is important, but I think going back and visualizing the tactic from the point where you needed to see it before you made the move is especially important. So here the point is that this move can be played because I actually do control this square with my pawn, my potential pawn push. Except they can go like this. now here. And now I can't go here. Computer gives a 1.5. Oh, I mean, this is hanging. So, but it's still 1.5 advantage, so there's also a positional advantage here for white. Okay, but 
duly noted, regardless, this is not an option because of this. So that's something I learned. So where were we? We were here. So yeah, that's an obvious mistake. The computer's saying here. So now, I mean, I would have still done this. And the computer gives that same line that kind of happened, except this is a much improved inversion because this piece is protected twice. Now white does get this bishop out, but so I have to run away basically. And when all is said and done, yeah, they've got this pawn still under attack, but now they can protect it with f4. Slight advantage to white, the kingside attack. My queen is unprotected, needs to run away. Makes sense to me. But nope, just this b3 move that has no purpose. So then we get this variation. So yeah, this would somewhat transpose-ish. It's still worse though than the earlier line we looked at because hmm. This is some deep stuff. I don't know what, what this is. Seems fine. Let's go back. Queen d2. I need to develop. I think it's just the only way to develop. But it is annoying because then I give that knight that a4 move. But then, like I said, I can trade queens. And then this pawn is annoying for white to protect. Okay. But the game continues. Ah. Computer. <coughs> I guess I missed that this pawn was hanging right here with check. That's pretty key. Because now, well, why can't they just block this way? Because then I get this knight here, and this is just a bunch of traded pieces in a material up position, or even a hanging pawn. Okay, so that was a blunder by me, but it was a mistake that was not important in an already winning position. And even when the castle, I mean, is negative 4.6 taking this pawn with check. Um, actually, yeah, it was a pawn worse. Still, the computer likes my idea. But the computer says, Rook. See, I guess the idea is if I take the bishop, they take with the pawn. And then they're attacking my queen and they get the c-file. So that's some compensation. So best for me to just castle. Here, move the knight to a better square, protecting this pawn. And now, After all is said and done, they attack another potential is d4 to solidify the center. And it's not as easy as it should be, really, for me at this point. So there were ways to make it a hard 
game to win. But instead they blunder again, I take the rook, and basically all is lost. Oh, this is totally fine. That's it. Cool. So, clean win in a 8 plus 15 game. And thanks for watching. See you later.